The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to the uh, May monthly webinar presented by Perry Johnson Laboratory Accreditation. My name is uh, Michael Kramer and I am the Calibration Program Manager at uh, PJLA. Uh, and today's uh, webinar is uh, ISO uh, 17025-2017. We're going to look at uh, Section 786. Uh, report and statements of conformity to include the decision rule. I know this state 786, we may venture, we're going to venture a little bit in the 71 because the whole concept of statements of, uh, excuse me, compliance and decision rule are, are actually also addressed under uh, review request tenders and contracts as well. Um, as always, uh, this webinar is being recorded. And if you haven't had a chance, uh, <clears throat> we just redesigned our website and uh, it really looks good. Uh, there's actually uh, um, a uh, tab up front, up, uh, up at the home page that says webinars. So this, this webinar will be recorded as all of our others are. So if uh, perhaps you want to go back and re-listen to it, or if you had a colleague that may have uh, uh, been unable to attend, uh, be with us today, and uh, would like to go back and uh, review the material. That, along with uh, <clears throat> the uh, wealth of uh, information we've uh, put out over the last several years in regards to uh, our uh, recorded webinars are available for your, um, for your listening presentation and the actual recording. So we're going to have to look at the uh, today's topic. So uh, statements of conformity. So the standard, and we are referring to uh, the uh, 2017 17025 standard. And we're sort of uh, in a transition here over the next several years because folks are in the process of transitioning from 2005 to 2017. But the 2017 has requirements for reports that include statements of conformity. Decision rules need to be documented and they need to take risk into account. I highlighted that word risk because that's a that's a term that's uh, appears frequently in the 2017 um, standard. Uh, the results uh, with a statement of conformities need to be clearly identified as such, including which specifications are met or not met, and what decision rule has been applied. So uh, in a nutshell, that is what we're going to be looking at today as it relates to 17025. So uh, I mentioned about the transition of uh, 2005 to 2017. What we're going to be uh, talking about today is not a stranger to those folks that, uh, that are currently accredited to the 2005 version. There's always been a requirement uh, that takes uh, statements of compliance and taking measurement uncertainty into account. So uh, going back a little bit, uh, 51042, and this was addressed in uh, reporting the results. Um, the calibration certificate shall relate to quantities and the results of functional statement. If a statement of compliance with a specification is made, this shall identify which clauses of the specification are met or not met. Those requirements are crosswalked over to 2017. Uh, when a statement of compliance with a specification is made, omitting the measurement results and associated uncertainties, the laboratory shall record those results and maintain them for possible future reference. Uh, 2017 does not give the option of and or a statement of compliance uh, with the measurement uncertainty. So uh, if you're strictly going by the requirements that are stated in 17025-2017, uh, the measurement uncertainty would have to be re recorded. 
excuse me, I reported on the um, calibration report. But uh, what I have highlighted there is uh, what I was resorting to that uh, this is nothing new. This is something that's uh, always been required. From the 2005 standard, when statements of compliance are made, um, pass, fail, intolerance, out of tolerance, the uncertainty to measurement shall, shall be in a requirement be taken into account. Hence, uh, even if you were just reporting a statement of compliance, pass, fail, intolerance, out of tolerance, and under the 2005 uh, requirements of 17025, you still had to take measurement uncertainty into account. You had to know what it was. Uh, had to take it into account uh, prior to making that statement of compliance. Okay, so we're going to um, look here at uh, review requests, tenders, and contracts. Because the 2017, uh, excuse me, uh, standard addresses the whole concept of statements of compliance and decision rules up front. So that's, uh, diff that's uh, different from the 2005 standard. So whatever you elect to do uh, with a statement of conformity, as you can see here, as this uh, requirement 713 is written verbatim from section uh, um, um, 71, review request tenders and contract, it needs to be discussed and agreed to by both parties. Um, so the requirement specifies when the customer requests a statement of conformity to a specification or standard for the test or calibration. Again, pass, fail, intolerance, out of tolerance. The decision rule, and this is during the contract review, the decision rule shall be clearly defined unless inherited in the requested specification or standard. And the decision rule selected shall be communicated to and agreed with the customers. So uh, the key here is um, when it is requested, which implies it is requested by the customer. So this means that contract review must, must take, make, take place in a clear definition agreed on before the job is started. Hence, uh, if let's say, for example, you don't make a statement of compliance, your customer client just needs to uh, have the value, degree of uncertainty, um, they can, uh, if they elect, not have that statement of conf conformity on the report. Um, hence, the whole um, con all the requirements for uh, that we're going through here today in regards to decision rules or um, statements of compliance won't apply. So these are just for when the customer needs that statement of compliance put on the report. So you, you may have noticed one uh, there under 713, it said unless inherited in the requested specification or standard. Uh, the decision rule selected shall be communicated to and agreed with the customer. This is, uh, I've never seen where this was prevalent in uh, the types of calibrations that I've been involved in. It is uh, actually uh, utilized a lot with those folks that are, um, involved in testing laboratories. So, so what does this mean? Uh, so I've uh, got some examples here. Uh, there's testing methods that determine how the rules are applied. One good common illustration is ASTM E18 for Rockwell hardness, where the testing and calibration decisions, decision rules are uh, take uncertainty into account effectively in the repeat testing and other limits as the spread of the data, et cetera, and the rules are defined in the methods. Another example is ASTM A29 for standard specifications for general requirements for steel bars, carbon, and alloy, uh, hot, well, where it has an auxiliary table that is based on the method uncertainty, method uncertainty to give some extra room to make a decision, i.e. it's inherited within the procedure. 
And last but not least, this may incur uh, various types of testing uh, where um, others are tests where you take, for example, two samples. Um, if both pass, you pass the, um, it's considered a pass. If one passes and the other fails, you take two or more samples. If both pass, it is determined a pass. And if either or both fails, it fails. This implicitly takes uncertainty into account and is defined, and is the defined, excuse me, decision rule. So whatever the case may be, the laboratory needs to be prepared to discuss what the decision rule options are regarding the compliance statement. Also, an understanding of what the customer may require where the risk of false accept or false reject lies. As with all statistical analysis, it's open to different interpretations and care must be taken to assure a correct agreement between parties. So uh, basically, uh, for calibration, typically you'll see the K factor, K equals two or a 95% confidence interval. Is that, uh, is that um, acceptance of that confidence interval and the, the uh, probability of a 5% false acceptance, is that uh, um, agreeable with the, with the, with the customer? May very well be. There are some instances that uh, perhaps uh, uh, that that risk would be too high. So, decision rule. Decision rule is one of the uh, new definitions within the 17025 2017 standard, and it basically is a rule that describes how measurement uncertainty is accounted for when stating conformity with a specified requirement. So uh, what we have here is just a broad picture of various data points with lower and upper limits, uh, values and uh, associated bands of uncertainty. Okay, so I mentioned where we address uh, statements of conformity and decision rule two places in the standards. So we come to agreement with our customer as far as the decision rule that's going to be applied. And as far as reporting the results, 786 is a, is a section that uh, that in the 2017 is um, just for reporting statements of conformity. So 7861 states, when a statement of conformity to a specification or standard is provided, the laboratory shall document the decision rule employed taking into account the level of risk, such as false accept and false reject and statistical assumptions associated with the decision rule and apply the decision rule. Have a note there, uh, basically going over what we spoke about uh, where, well, actually we didn't, where the decision rule is prescribed by the customer, regulations or normative documents, a further consideration of the level of risk is not necessary. Seven, eight, six, two. The laboratory shall report on the statement of conformity such that the statement clearly identifies to which results the statement of conformity applies, which specification standards are part thereof are met or not met. The decision rule applied unless it is inherited in the requested specification or standard. And uh, here's a note uh, uh, for further information, ISO guide 98-4. And uh, I looked that up, that is actually the uncertainty of measurement part four role of measurement uncertainty in conformity assessments. So decision rules for proving conformance or non-conformance with a specification makes a differentiation whether conformance or non-conformance shall be determined with a high probability. 
the expanded measurement uncertainty and a confident level of approximately 95%, K equals two, will generally be considered as adequate. There may be cases that would require a higher confidence level, 99% for, for example, and a uh, K factor of three could be chosen. Um, and uh, just uh, my, my past experience, I've had these requests before and uh, thinking about it, these are organizations that are involved um, with uh, typically things that uh, may impact public health, for example. That um, um, level of risk may be uh, uh, need to be lowered, i.e., taking a 99, uh, excuse me, a 99 percent confidence interval as opposed to a 95. And other uh, um, organizations that come to mind are those that are involved uh, with testing that are used to support law enforcement. So, uh, perhaps calibrations uh, may be uh, used in a court of law. Uh, those types of uh, organizations may not uh, um, accept a 95% confidence in, in a interval and may in fact look at the, um, uh, elevating that to perhaps the 99 or K equals two, or excuse me, three as opposed to two. So where the measurement uncertainty interval is overlapping, the limit value implies a careful analysis that should be established. Objective criteria, i.e. decision rule to accept the measurement, having part of the uncertainty outside the tolerance. Okay, yeah, so what are we referring to there? Before we get to that, one thing that you hear a lot, uh, a term in association with uh, decision rule and taking measurement uncertainty into account is guard band. So basically what a guard band is, is the magnitude of the offset of the specification limit to accept or reject the zone boundary. So in other words, um, if you have enough upper limit as uh, accepted here, uh, as far as a pass fail criteria, um, you expand that out, you, or in other words, uh, you give it a little bit of cushion to take into account your decision rule, which typically employs the uncertainty. Hence, you uh, actually, you increase the tolerance um, associated with that specification um, to incorporate the tolerance plus the guard band. Okay, so uh, uh, here we have illustrated uh, various scenarios. So uh, compliance, you can stay compliance if the specification limit is not breached by the measure results plus the expanded uncertainty. Uh, this is taken into account a 95% coverage probability. Then compliance with the spe specification can be stated. This is normally reported as compliance. The measurement result is within or below the specification limit when the measurement uncertainty is taken into account. Calibration, this is often referred to as pass. So what's illustrated here is uh, various scenarios. And this here, we're just looking at uh, one specification limit. So if you look at category A, we have a, we have a uh, reported value. With the measurement uncertainty, you can see that's all within the uh, conformance zone. Hence, uh, an organization can specify a pass or, a, uh, yeah, a pass um, in regards to those points that fall within category A. Uh, not compliance. If the specification limit is exceeded by the measure, measurement result, minus the expanded uncertainty with a 95% coverage probability, then non-compliance with a specification can be stated. This is all, this can be reported as non-compliance. The measurement result is outside or above the specification limits when the measurement uh, uncertainty is taken into account. In calibration, this is often reported to as a fail. 
Then when the uh, um, picture depicted at the bottom there, if you look at category D, we see the value, which is definitely out of the specification limits. Taking into account measurement uncertainty does not cross over that specification limit. Um, hence, that could be taking measurement uncertainty into account, report it clearly as a fail. Finally, if the measurement result plus or minus the expanded uncertainty with a 95% coverage probability overlaps the limit, it is not possible to state compliance or non compliance the measurement result and the expanded uncertainty with 95% coverage probability should be reported together with a statement indicating that neither compliance nor non-compliance was demonstrated. So obviously here on this illustration, category B, category C falls into this, this um, scenario. Uh, category B, you have a, a result that the value is very close to the tolerance um taking measurement uncertainty into account uh it actually possibly may not actually pass looking at category c we have a value that actually falls outside the specification limit taking measurement uncertainty into account actually falls within the acceptance category hence it may not be reported as a fail when you take uncertainty into account Uh, something I'd like to um, just uh, review here at this point is uh, something we currently have into in effect in uh, PL3, which is PJLA's policy on measurement uncertainty. Uh, we've not uh, revised uh, anything currently with PL1234. We have labs uh, that I said is operating under uh, um, two different standards, um, but uh, this is one area that uh, I feel that uh, probably will not need any revision. Um, and the clauses here, of course, is in the 2005 standard. So currently the clause 546 of the standard contains the requirement that calibration and testing laboratories have an apply procedure defining the manner by which they estimate uncertainty the measurements for calibrations and tests performed. Additionally, for calibration in laboratories, PGLA requires that this procedure also defines the manner of which uncertainty is accounted for when making a statement of compliance with the specification. Then PL, uh, excuse me, PL3 goes on. If the laboratory uncertainty procedure, and I highlight it does not, so what um, does not address the manner in which uncertainty is accounted for, PJLA will require that it be accounted for using the method suggested in ILAC, which is a guidance document, G8, and is currently still at the revision level uh, 2009. And one thing I, I just want to stress for her, this is not required. It says only if the laboratory uncertainty procedure does not address how measurement uncertainty is taken into account. Then, uh, the requirements specified here in PL3 um, would uh, need, it, need to be ad adhered to. So uh, in those cases, if, uh, if you take a measurement uncertainty into account, would um, um, result in a possible failure where the measure values actually passes, the following example compliance statement can be used. It is not possible to stay compliant using a 95 uh, coverage probability for the expanded uncertainty, although the measurement results falls within the specified limit. Uh, optimally, if the organization wishes, it can simply state it is not possible to state compliance. So these are those cases where value is very close to the tolerance limit, however uncertainty may kick it out. Uh, we also state in PL3 that we define this condition as pass and determinant. So an organization, if they wish, they can refer to these um, particular points as pass and determinant. Looking at the other side of the coin, if taken uncertainty into account would produce a possible pass where the measure value actually failed, the following example compliance shall be used. It is not possible to state compliance, although the measurement result falls outside specified limits, 
using a 95% coverage probability for expanded uncertainty uh, may produce values within the specified limits. Optionally, if the organization wishes, it can simply stay. It is not possible to stay compliant. So these are those uh, conditions where the um, recorded value, very close to the tolerance limit, uncertainty may actually cross over that. Um, we also define this condition as fail and determine it. Okay, so based on the previous models and, and, and if accepted by the customer, as per the requirements specified in 713, I want to say, and if accepted by the customer as addressed up front, the following decision rules can be documented. And this is based on pretty much uh, we, what we see uh, quite often at K equals, fail, uh, K equals two at a 95% uh, confidence interval. Accounting for the uncertainty will be taken to mean that at a 95% confidence level, the measurement results plus and minus the expanded uncertainty shall be totally within the specification limits. Or it could be uh, uh, decision rule could be stated as the results cannot be reported as being in specification. It's the risk of false acceptance to the customer is greater than 5%. Okay, for the cases using GARBEN, it's particularly suitable for measurement results with a fixed uncertainty and a simple strategy to establish a decision rule. Um, is to compare the measure results with the acceptance zone limits being considered in compliance. If the measure value is inside this zone and a non-compliance rejected otherwise. If measurement results could have variable values of uncertainty, a different approach without considering guard bands is recommended. So this is something that um, I've not seen in calibration, maybe employed a lot uh, in the testing organs, excuse me, testing laboratories. Um, so I want to give you another uh, scenario here and an example um, utilizing something other than than guard banding. So. Uh, um, in the cases, uh, the and those these cases, and going back to the previous slide, uh, we're in the last paragraph there. And just looking at that picture, what we're looking at down there is a, a normal distribution, 95% confidence interval, where we have uh, the 0.05 uh, um, probability of false acceptance uh, depicted in the red part there. So we're looking at the probability of the value and the um, degree of uncertainty falling within the acceptance limit of this normal distribution. So in these cases, the criteria can be established performing a test of hypothesis in which fulfillment of the hypothesis condition implies the decision of acceptance and other and otherwise implies decision of rejection. Therefore, assuming a probability of a type one error, uh, which will be referred to as mu. The decision rule can be expressed as, and um, we have the acceptance and rejection. So what that acceptance is saying, uh, if the hypothesis, if your value and, uh, falls within, is less than or equal to the specification excuse me, the tolerance. However, if your type one error, i.e. the probability of uh, it falling within the 95% um, distribution um, is true, it can refer to as a pass. You reject a hypothesis, and these are those, those scenarios where, of course, the uh, um, the value is uh, within the specified limits. However, in this case, if the, the probability of it falling outside that 95% confidence interval is false, 
then that would be expressed as a uh, failure, excuse me, as false, and hence you cannot state uh, uh, state that uh, it is a um, statement of compliance um, as a true pass or fail. So basically what we're looking at here uh, is the, uh, of course, the value being less than the tolerance limit. Now we have a function based on a Gastonian probability distribution function. And I'll go over this here later on in the, in, the, in the presentation of exactly what this is. But basically it takes into account uh, the calculation of the, the um, tolerance limit uh, minus the actual recorded value and the actual measurement uncertainty. So I have an example here, and actually I want to give credit to the Europe your lab cookbook uh, document number eight, which is uh, determination of uh, conformance with specification using measurement uncertainties possible strategies. This year at lab and a colleague of mine sent me this series and I found it as being, uh, being excellent uh, as a, a resource to, for looking at the new standard and, and uh, um, looking at the, their interpretation of uh, um the requirements and given some good examples uh i know that it's available online i'm sorry not the web address here but it's a whole series it's just not pertaining to um compliance with the specification if you uh say google for example the uh, uramet lab cookbook uh it should take you to the appropriate link uh just some uh, some information i like to pass on i found it uh useful and uh I appreciate my colleague sending it to me. So we're going to look at an example uh, based on um, the uh, hypothesis series that we just went over. So let's take, for example, your reading is at uh, 2.7. You have a standard of uncertainty of 0.2 with a single tolerance limit not to exceed three millimeters and a special, special a specification of conformity of one minus that type one of 95%, thus assuming a type one error of 0.05%. So uh, basically we're looking at the value uh, being less than three millimeters. And then if we're looking at 95, if the probability of the value falling within is, is greater, equal to or greater than 95, it would be true. Conversely, if that statement is, is uh, is false, then you would reject the hypothesis. So to estimate the probabilities related with the examples, given the conformance probability, we need to calculate using the general expression, um, which is stated here. So basically, yeah, the value is definitely less than um, three millimeters. So we then, and it's a little confusing here, we have a function key that I'm going to um, uh, explain here in a little bit. You take together that equation, provide it in, in conjunction with that Gastonian uh, distribution function. If you do the pure calculation, it comes out to be 1.5, which equates to a 93.3. So in this case, the hypothesis is false and the decision is um is of rejection to non-compliance put a little question mark what does that symbol mean um those of you that are actually utilizing this i'm sure probably has this function on it but i'll leave this up here but uh, as you can see it's a um using tables of the gastonian um probability distribution function you have software that has this function you also have uh Microsoft um, Excel functions, which is depicted here, that takes value, mean, standard deviation, and a cumulative um, into account in coming up with that 93.3 uh, distribution of it uh, being uh, false acceptance would be, of course, greater than the 0.05%. Uh, Oh, goodness. Sorry, folks, I should have had another uh, slide there. Um, 
this is the end of the uh, presentation for today. However, yeah, what I just realized was uh, I normally have a slide here for uh, if you have any questions. So basically what we'll do here is you should have a place on your screen, which um, has a, an opportunity for you to ask questions. So I'll be muted here for about five minutes and uh, I'll allow if you have any questions and please keep them to uh, today's topic. Uh, they will be forwarded to me. I will start chiming back in in about five minutes and um, I will answer as many as I can. Again, please keep them uh, pertaining to today's topic. So uh, I'll mute myself now. If you have any questions, feel free to submit them.
Okay, uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, just a couple questions here. Not too many like we normally get uh, on um, on our webinars. Um, hopefully, we're not having any technical issues with questions getting to me. But uh, I'll go ahead and read what I got. And the first one is, uh, oh, we actually uh, talked about this uh, one of the first couple slides. Uh, can we view the webinar after today's uh, today as well? And uh, I already uh, I, I specified uh, oh, at the beginning that uh, this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be uh, available um, on our website. Just go to the uh, our Dooley Design website, uh, which um, we actually have a tab for webinar. Uh, follow links to recorded webinars. Uh, this one will soon be, um, hopefully soon be uploaded uh, uh, to the ones that are already there. Question number two, and I thought of, I was thinking about it. Uh, uh, um, can you clarify your comments interchanging conformity with compliance? Uh, just thinking about it, I, I believe they can be used interchangeably, whether you state uh, compliance or conformity with a specification. If you're stating compliance, pass or fail, or if you're stating uh, con conformity, with a, a specification, it conforms, it passes or fails, that uh, all the requirements uh, specified in section 7.1 and, and 7.8 would, would apply. Um, regarding of um, how you're um, um, wording them, thinking about it, I believe they could be used interchangeably. You know, in the contents of what we went over here today, which uh, are the requirements in uh, section seven one and seven eight? Um, again, uh, thank you all for for joining us today. I, I hope you found this uh, information uh, beneficial and useful, and can uh, utilize it as you move forward with your transition. Uh, perhaps you're transitioning to the 2017 uh, version of 17025, or perhaps uh, you're uh, looking to get accredited for the first time. Um, Want to? Uh, uh, um, provide the uh, information which is currently scheduled for next uh, next month. Uh, again, we're looking at an, another hot topic that uh, in uh, the 2017 standard as opposed to 2005, which we're going to look at section 8.5, actions to address risk and opportunity. Uh, I hope to incorporate some tools that can be utilized by organizations to comply with this section. So uh, mark your calendar, uh, currently scheduled for June 28th, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you and I uh, look forward to getting together next month.